and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can use the Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit along with VRTK so we can access the UI elements within Unity's UI system. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. So I'm reusing the scene that we set up the multiple camera rigs in and the camera pass through and we'll use this scene to add the Unity UI stuff. To access the Unity XR Interaction Toolkit, we just need to make sure it's part of our project. It is by default in this project because it's included via the Pico SDK wrapper, but if you don't have it and you're not using Pico, you can just go to Window and then Package Manager, and then just find the XR Interaction Toolkit. I'm using version 2.3.0. Make sure that's installed and I've also got a couple of the samples installed. I've got the starter assets installed and I've got the hand interaction demo installed as well. That's all we'll need for now and I can close our package manager down. So I'm going to start by just adding a UI element to the scene. We can do that by right clicking, going down to UI and then we can see the different UI elements that Unity offers. I'm just going to start with a button. So I'm going to click button text mesh pro. If you don't have text mesh pro installed it will prompt you at that point to install it but i already have it so it's not going to ask me so we've got a default button here and when we add this button it creates the canvas and an event system so if we look at our event system by default it's got this standalone input module on we don't want that we need to use the xr ui input module that comes with the xr interaction toolkit so we're going to remove the standalone input module by clicking on the three dots and clicking remove component now all we need to do is click add component and add the XR UI input module. And when that's added, we need to make sure our active input module is set to the new input system as this project is using input system. Everything is ticked already down here. We don't need to worry about setting all these for now. These just allow us to use the input system with our mouse or a touch screen. But because we're just using it with VR at the moment, we can just leave all these as is. And then the next thing we need to do is go over to our canvas and we need to set our canvas from the render mode of screen space to world space. And you don't need to provide an event camera here. However, if you don't provide an event camera, if you are trying to use touch screen or mouse, this may not work. So what we can do here to set this event camera is if we go to our tracked alias and then we look down and we find the headset camera changed event and we add a new listener there. We can grab, drag and drop our canvas into there. And then in the function, if we get a canvas, we can just set world camera. And what this will do is whenever the tracked alias changes, the headset camera that's used by that camera rig will emit and it will go over to this canvas and it will set that world camera for us there. The next thing we need to do on our canvas is add the tracked device graphics raycaster. By default, we get a graphics raycaster, but that's not going to help us within VR. So the tracked device graphics raycaster comes as part of the XI interaction toolkit as well. So we're just going to add component and add that now. And with that added, we shouldn't need to change any of the settings here. And we can now see we've got our canvas set up and we've got our event system set up. Next thing we need to do is make our canvas a little bit smaller and make it more central. So I'm just going to change all the settings here. I'm just going to set the position X, Y, and Z to 0, 0, 0. And I'm just going to make the width of this 400 by 600. And then I'm going to reduce the scale of the canvas down quite a bit. So I'm just going to set this to 0 0.001. And now if we see that canvas in the scene, we can see it's down here. So I'm just going to grab it and drag it and move it over, roughly over our table. And we'll bring it forward just a bit and maybe move it to the right a bit and then we can just rotate it around that y-axis so it's facing us as we get to our table so there we go we've now got a button in our scene we can add some other ui elements so on the canvas if i just right click and go down to ui i can add in a slider so i've added the slider in and i'll just move that up and let's add in a drop down so we'll add the drop down and we'll move that down and for the slider, what we're going to do is just make this a little bit easier to access. So I'm going to make the height a bit bigger. So let's make it about 60. And then what I'm going to do is inside the handle slide area on handle, I'm just going to turn the image off so we can't see that. But I'm going to make it wider so it's easier to touch. I'm going to make that about 48. And we can keep changing these to change the look of them if we need. But that should work enough for now. So there we go. We've set up our event system and we've got the UI XR input module on there. And we've set up our canvas and we've got the tracked device graphics raycaster on there so everything from the canvas side is now set up the next thing we need to do is set up the unity xr interactions the xr poke interactor and the xr ray interactor and that will allow us to touch these ui elements or access them at a distance with a ray so we can do that easily by going to our tracked alias and then into our aliases and then if we look at our right controller alias i'm just going to create a new sub game object in here and i'm going to name this xr interactors and within here, I'm going to create another one for the XR Poke Interactor. 
And on the XR Poke Interactor, I'm going to add the XR Poke Interactor component. And the Poke Interactor will allow us to actually poke these UI elements with our controller. And to do this, we need to set an attach transform, and that just makes it easier to have a space where it can actually poke. So under here, I'm just going to add a sphere mesh by going to 3D object and then sphere. And then I'm going to make this really small, so it's going to be 0.03. And we don't want the sphere collider on it at all, and we don't actually want it to render the mesh. I'm going to turn that off. We want to move it forward a little bit, so I'm going to move it forward about 0.03. And with that sphere set up, we can go back to our XR Poke Interactor and we can use that sphere as our attached transform. Now we shouldn't need to change anything else in the XR Poke Interactor. That should work as is. So next thing we're going to do is on our XR Interactors, I'm going to create another empty game object. I'm going to call this XR Ray Interactor. And this is just going to hold the XR Ray Interactor components. So I'm going to add one of those now. And if we look down at XR Ray Interactor, we can just take off the force grab because we're not actually going to use this to pick things up. We're using VRTK's interaction system. But everything else can pretty much stay the same. The one thing we do notice up here, it says this component requires an XR controller component. And we do need that, otherwise this Ray Interactor isn't going to know when to interact with the UI elements. So we have to provide the button that we want to actually select UI elements with. All we need to do is add the XR controller component. And I've added the XR controller action based component. And then if we scroll down on here, we don't need to fill in any of these things because these will all be handled by VRTK. The only two we need to fill in is the UI press action and the UI press action value. So if we click use reference, because we're using Tilia's Unity input system samples, we can just get that straight from there. So if we click the reference, all we want to do is use our trigger on our right controller because we're setting this up for the right controller. So if we scroll down and we look down here, we should see right trigger press. So we're going to use that. And then we just need to do the same for the UI press action value as well. So select use reference and then click in the reference and then scroll down and find that right trigger pressed. And there we go. We've set up the Ray Interactor now. So that will work. The other thing you can do with the Ray Interactor is use a line renderer so it can draw where that ray is casting. So we'll add a line renderer component. And then we also need to add in the XR Interactor line visual. So let's add that component in as well. And the last thing we can do is add in an XR interaction group so it doesn't get confused with which interactor it should be using. So if we just go to our XR interactors and we'll add in the XR interaction group component. And then all we need to do is add two group members in here. And then we're going to drag our XR poke interactor and our XR rate interactor. And there we go. We've now set up Unity's XR interaction toolkit UI elements. So we can now interact with Unity UI using that and continue to use all the other elements of VRTK. And we can see that they work nicely with each other. So let's run a couple of builds and we can see this working on a couple of different headsets. And we can see that the VRTK setup is switching between the headsets as we expected. And Unity's XR interaction toolkit is allowing us to interact with those UI elements. So we're in the scene. We can see we can still pick things up with VRTK. And we've got our ray coming out of our right controller, which we can now control the UI elements here. And we've also got the ability to push them and drag them around with the poke interactor. And there we go. We can change our drop down as well. Let's jump over to another headset and see it working in a different headset. And now we're using the HTC XR Elite. We can see we can pick things up with VRTK. We've got our ray caster pointer. And we can still access all of these UI elements as we could on the Pico 4. And there we go. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Leave any likes, dislikes, comments down below. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. And I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.